up, it's game time, everybody stand up From my town we roars, we ready for sure From the field to the court, yeah we ready for war This is 845, varsity man up It's game time, everybody stand up From my town we roars, we ready for sure From the field to the court, yeah we ready for war I said it's game time Hey folks, Kevin Witt here, and this is the Varsity 845 Basketball Show. Mira Wasev and I will give you everything you need to know this week about local boys and girls hoops. We've got features this week on Section 9's Biggest Little Man and a look at Division I college recruiting in local girls basketball. Mira and I also have our new top 10 rankings, and there's the ever popular Plays of the Week. Before all that goes down, let's take a quick look at what's happening. Newburgh beat Cornwall 65-64 on Wednesday in one of the best regular season boys games I've seen in quite some time. Don't be surprised if both are holding Section 9 championship plaques. Two days later, Newburgh won at Pine Bush 81-69, despite the night of Clee Anthony Early's life. Pine Bush's big man scored from up close, from far away, and from all points in between. He finished with 48 points on 19 of 33 shooting. He also grabbed 17 rebounds. Elsewhere Friday, Burke Catholic crushed Sullivan West 86-40 and took over first place in Orange County Interscholastic Athletic Association Division 4. Seward got back into the Division 6 race, beating the family school by 29. In the MHAL Division 2 over the last week, Red Hook beat New Paltz, which beat Oniora, which beat Red Hook. So that race remains wide open. On the girls' side, Cornwall is playing well after Ethan won out against Warwick. Kingston is still on a roll after a big win at Menacing Valley. And Monroe Woodbury and Coleman Catholic haven't slowed down either. Chapelfield is quietly becoming one of the premier teams in the section, while Christy Morano's hot shooting has propelled Highland into the conversation as to the best Mid-Hudson Athletic League team. Our first feature is on Marcus Henderson, who you have no trouble picking out at a Newburgh basketball game. The tradition here at Newburgh Free Academy is for its boys basketball players to be big, athletic, and be able to just jump right out of the gym. But this year there's an exception. His name is Marcus Henderson, and he's only five foot four. Oh, and by the way, he's the starting point guard for the state's 18th ranked class double A team. Talk a little bit about the job that he does for you guys. His job is excellent. He's speed. Everybody can really stay in front of him. He handles the ball very well and controls the tempo of the game. Henderson has been the smallest kid on the floor all of his life, but if you think that's affected his confidence, guess again. But I laugh sometimes like, wow, I'm really this little and I can be scrappy when I want. So it, deter it makes me more determined and dedicated. Coach Frank Dinocenzio brought Henderson to the varsity last year as a sophomore, so Henderson clearly isn't intimidated by his surroundings. How is Marcus able to overcome his size disadvantage on the floor? Well, first off, Mark doesn't think he's small. Mark is a tremendous ball handler, and he's very smart. He understands the game itself. I know teams try to trap him. You can't trap him. He's almost impossible to trap if he doesn't want to be trapped. What do you think people's reaction is when they see you coming out on the floor? I feel that they say, oh, he's little, he might come off the bench, he might not do this and that. And then when I come in the game, they'll be like, oh, that's Marcus Henderson? I didn't know that was him. He's so short and quick. Moving on. Kingston's Rachel Coffey has been one of the area's best players since she took the varsity court as an 8th grader. Now a junior, she's no longer a secret outside of the area. Here's Mira Wasev. It was a playoff atmosphere in Slade Hill last week when perennial rivals Kingston and Menacing Valley hooked up for their only matchup of the regular season. Kingston guard Rachel Coffey got the better of six foot five center Stephanie Dolson in last year's section finals. While Dolson made a verbal commitment to national powerhouse UConn, there was a big time ACC coach eyeing Coffey from the stands. University of Miami coach Katie Meyer can't talk to or about coffee under NCAA rules, but she shed light on what it takes to play at the Division I level. The ACC is one of the fastest conferences in America, and I think the difference between high school and college isn't so much the speed of the game, but it's how much mentally you have to make adjustments and you have to make them on the fly. You know, you really don't have time to pout. 
you don't have time to feel sorry for the mistake you made two minutes ago because if you wait two minutes, you'd probably a 10-point swing in the game. Coach Meyer picked a good game to travel 1,300 miles to see. Kingston led most of the way and took a six-point lead at halftime, but Menacing Valley pulled within three heading into the fourth. Then it came down to Dawson and Coffee trading baskets in the last five minutes. It's unusual for head coaches to make recruiting trips during the high school season, but it does speak to the level of interest Miami has in Coffee. I think when you come to a high school game, you get a real feel for the character of the kid, what kind of leader she is. So I do, I enjoy, I personally enjoy coming to high school games. Coffee gave Kingston the lead for good on a drive, and the Tigers went on to a 50 to 42 win. In Slate Hill, it's Mira Wasef for Varsity 845. Now on to this week's Boys and Girls Top 10. Mira? Starting with number 10, Tuxedo. Has three starters averaging in double figures. Number 9, Highland. Christy Morano is on the torrid scoring spree. At number 8, Minisink Valley. Needs the offense to catch up with the defense. 7, Wallkill. Headed for a showdown with Cornwall in the section finals. Number six, Warwick. Slips a bit after back-to-back -back losses to Cornwall and Monroe Woodbury. Number five, Chapel Field. Grace Hodges and Lindy Felix complement each other's games. Number four, Coleman Catholic. Has separated itself from the rest of Class D. Number three, Cornwall has played four state-ranked double-A teams and has a big game against Minnesota Friday night. Number two, Monroe Woodbury, big rematch with Kingston Friday night. And at number one, Kingston booked the trip to Troy. Let's move to the boys. Number 10, Goshen, returns to the rankings after it beat Menacing Valley. Number nine, New Paltz, a tough team when it's at full strength. Number eight, Red Hook. Drops two spots after its shocking loss to Aniora. Number seven, Kingston. It's getting hard to keep faith in these guys. Number six, Washingtonville. Continuing to climb and keeps improving. Number five, Pine Bush. We'll get another crack at Monroe Woodbury and Newburgh. Number four, Menacing Valley. Rebounded from the Goshen loss with a win at Kingston. Number three, Cornwall, state ranked in Class A and nearly knocked off Newburgh. Number two, Monroe Woodbury, can't suffer a letdown Tuesday at Burke Catholic. And number one, Newburgh, holds on to the top spot after surviving at Cornwall. It's time for the plays of the week. Now remember, if you've got something you want to send us, email us at sports at th-record.com and we'll get you through the process. Remember, we can't be everywhere, even though we'd like to be. So here we go. Here's Kingston's Devon Dunlop, submitted via YouTube, making his point against Middletown. Devon Dunlop! Cornwall's Kelsey McDonald with the steal. She finds some room, dribbles the length of the floor, and lays it in for two. Here's some Monroe Woodbury teamwork. Michael Kennedy grabs the rebound. Outlet to TJ McPite, who makes life easy for Marvin Jean. Menacing Valley's Stephanie Dolson with the steal. She dribbles, takes a little contact, takes a little more, turns, and hits the short jumper. Well, that's it for this week. Check back every week for the Varsity 845 basketball show. Check the whole site for all sorts of cool stuff, and we're talking numbers galore. Coaches, if we're missing something, please tell us. This is our project, but we're doing it for everybody. From Mira Wasev, I'm Kevin Witt. It's game time, so it's time to score. If you're not playing to win, then what you're playing for? From the field to the hardwood floor, win some and lose some. Just give it your all, whether it's basket, base, or football. It's all American. It's on when the season's here again. PYP, gotta play your position. Gotta go hard, give it a hundred and ten. Everybody stand up for my town and yours. Be ready for sure. 
from the field to the court, get ready.